Welcome back, adventurers. I'm an adventurer like you, and I'm playing Crusader Kings 3 in my series of Let's Play for Achievements. I had this idea of doing a grand run from the very beginning, the early start date in the game, to the very end, the latest date that um, Iron Man with achievements enabled will allow you to play. Um, so this playthrough will be from 867, at the time of the Vikings, until 1453, on the eve of the fall of Constantinople. And, uh, yeah, basically the end of the Middle Ages. More or less. Um, yes, so this will be a long-running series. Um, I, I checked with some of my recent um, videos. And I've done uh, like five years per hour on average. Um, that would mean this would take maybe four months or so with my plan uh, to run this but uh, we're probably gonna try to play faster especially in the later stages we'll see how it goes um today we'll start with a setup of the game i have made a, a special kind of start um, it's a bit gamey, I guess. Uh, staying within the rules of um, achievements, you can design your own character with giving um, the character a maximum of 400 customization points. So, I have done um, what we call the Father Abraham setup. In which you design a character that is old, has a lot of shortcomings, as many and negative customization points as you can collect without adding any inheritable traits, because you wouldn't want your children to inherit all those bad traits. So with that, you get a lot of extra customization points, so you can add some really good inheritable traits Plus, you can add a number of children. And since we are playing early Middle Age, um, in the West, of course, being a patriarchal society, sons are important. So that's what I have done. And I decided to start in the province where I'm from, which is Zeeland in the Netherlands. And in the 9th century, that place was being invaded, attacked, raided by Vikings. So that is something we will have to deal with in the game as well. Viking raids were very common. Um, and uh, they, some of them even settled there for a while. Because it's a good place to... Um, because it's obviously at the sea. Let's let's switch to the map here. It's at the sea, so it's a good place to start and uh, going over to England and raiding, well, the richer lands of England. Just made a fresh cup of coffee. We're all set. It's a grey, drizzly morning here in eastern China, where I am now. And that is kind of the goal of this playthrough as well. We start here in Western Europe. We try to expand our realm and maybe move. We'll see how it goes. And I hope we end up at the eastern edge of the map. Where I'm living now, uh, that part of China is not on the map, but the, the western parts of it are on the CK3 map. So that's what we're aiming for eventually we'll start small we'll start with a count so yeah let's um, 
Let's see. Right. Okay. Uh, we're good. The stream is stable. We have a good uh, bit rate. We're in the green. Everything seems to be working fine. Wow, that's amazing. Hi, Stephen. So your post on Reddit. Thank you. Uh, I hope you will enjoy this. We're going to get into the gameplay now, actually. Um, so we are the Count of Zeeland, which is a very small county. Um, the capital, Middelburg. We have some uh, expansion capabilities here. It's not too bad. And we are under the Jarl, the Duke of Holland. And this was uh, a Norseman who had settled here, apparently. Okay, so yes, we are, we are ugly, we are a leper, we are one-legged, we're disfigured, infirm, a drunkard, gout-ridden, cancerous, blind, deviant who also has been an adulterer, fornicator, and murderer. So a very bad character, who is also craven, shy, and lazy, and paranoid, on top of all that. So his stats are zero, but because of that, we got extra customization points to add the good stuff. Genius, handsome, and hale. Also pure-blooded and fecund. So hopefully some of this uh, will have come through to my children, and it has. I did Dutch Kingdom creation. Uh, my friend is Dutch, her names all my sons after him. Yes, <laughs> that's fun. All your sons named after him. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be using old Germanic Dutch names. Um, I have actually a list on the website, lists a lot of them. Um, of course, the children generated by the game have uh, the Dutch names in the game. Most of them are good, actually. Um, let's have a look at my family. Because, uh, yeah, I was able to add 10 children in uh, my dynasty, the wolf. A thousand Thomases. <laughs> yeah, that must have been confusing. That must have been confusing. Yeah, so our um, starting character, Count Alvin, is 60 years old <coughs> and um, you can get a few more per, um, customization points by making him 70 but then all his children will be 10 years older as well, well half of them will in, be in their 50s at the start of the game which is a bit old I think Anyway, as you can see, we have some very good um, inherited traits here. All the same beard and haircut too. Huh? Yeah, that does get confusing. You'd have to look at their families to know who is who and their jobs and so on. Yeah, Definitely worth a laugh, I can imagine that. I can. So yeah. I'm Dutch myself, so I know these names. Um, that's also why my English uh, may sound a little bit off. But, um, yeah. I did uh, an Ireland run before this. You can check out the playlist on YouTube. And uh, I, I'm sure I absolutely murdered the Irish names and my apologies again for that. I'm always open to being corrected on those things, so don't shy away from adding to my knowledge. So yeah, and uh, this is the family. My heir is a uh, Jakob, which is a very Christian name, not a Germanic name. So um, yeah, can we? No, we can't change that. There is, of course, a a, um, a mod for that, but we can't play with mods because we're playing for achievements. Ah, you're of Irish descent and you murder them. Yeah, you need to be like a native speaker, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Um, I just... I like to make an effort. Let's say it that way. 
I like to make an effort. And uh, sometimes it's it's really cringy when you hear words mis words mispronounced that aren't even that difficult. But eh, it's the way of the world, right? We have too many different languages. It's just the way it is. So my air is not amazing. He's not the best we have. I think even, do we have like some of all skills? Yeah, Fulbert here, who is a genius. Mm. No, yes. Harold would be very nice with 15, stewardship 13, uh, intrigue 17, learning, but it's not, it's not too different from this, just more intrigue, but he's a genius. But then again, how can you be a genius and only have a one-star education? RNG, RNG. Randomness does silly things sometimes. But this is not too bad, even though it's only two stars. He's an insightful thinker and he got 21 learning. He is intelligent, pure-blooded and handsome. So that's um, that's a good air, right? Uh, most Dutch people I've met speak amazing English. The Dutch, Germans, and Scandinavians usually all speak very good English. Yeah, because our languages, of course, are related to English. And we're all from the bigger Germanic uh, language group. Plus, uh, we're close to England. And uh, our languages are generally small, except for German, obviously. But our language is small. So all of the popular culture we get, TV series, uh, pop music, and all that, is mostly imported from America and the UK. So yeah, we get uh, familiar with that and uh, unlike Germany where they will uh, dub uh, just the, the speaking of a TV series, in Dutch it's just subtitles, right? So we get all the popular series and movies, and we just hear the English with subtitles. Plus, of course, we have we have decent education, so all of that helps. All of that helps. Yeah, the main thing uh, for Dutch is well, we don't have the th uh, the th sound in our language, but that's not too hard to learn. Although some uh, people will keep making mistakes with that, and uh, we don't have a difference between a and e. So there is there is no bad and bed uh, minimal pair in Dutch. We only have the S out. So yeah, that's something I I need to like pay attention to. And maybe sometimes I overdo it. I don't know. So yeah, that's where we are. Okay. So all these sons are unmarried. That's something we'll need to fix. Also, uh, we need to make sure our court, our council is set up right. Funnily enough, our marshal, I had just had a look at it, no, I didn't want to look at it. Our marshal, Franz, he is um, an elusive shadow. He's good at intrigue, but somehow his marshal score ended up even better because, well, he's brave. Although he's a pig. Yeah, he has pretty good stats, except for stewardship, but we'll, uh, we'll need to get him a spouse. Um, our starting character is uh, already at death's doorstep. So, and that's the whole idea of setting it up like this, that you have a bunch of sons who have good traits and our dynasty has a decent start at the game. Also, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Catholicism allows, yes, a vunculate marriage. That means marriage between cousins, aunts, nephews, uncles and nieces is allowed. And will not give the incest secret. So we can engage in some um, what would you call it? Second grade incest? 
So cousins can get married. So when uh, these sons will have children, uh, we can keep some of these good traits within our dynasty. Yeah, the downside of being Catholic, playing Catholic in the game, is that it's male-dominated. And even if you have amazing daughters, you can't give them jobs. As, except for spy master and court physician, which is something indeed we need to assign. Let's start with that. Let's see who we have that is good in learning. Some old-fashioned Alabama marriages, yeah. Although, not too long ago, even in the Netherlands, that wasn't unheard of. Right? Those villages, everyone's related to everyone, you know, just like in good old Alabama. Um, yeah. So he is an insightful thinker. Right, so he's focused on learning. I think if we make him the court physician, he's also my steward, but that should be okay, right? We point his court physician. Yeah, we pay him, but that's fine. And he's now the court physician. All right. Yeah, our, our bishop hates our guts because well everything is wrong with us of course we're short reign also he is anglo-saxon and we're dutch so foreign culture although to be fair i don't like this right if the catholic church assigns a bishop to us he shouldn't hold it against us that he is from a foreign culture anyway yeah i'm a deviant adulterer fornicator craven a leper and murderer and so yeah all that is not very good but we don't care um because once our son will inherit the county then it should be good it should be good and we're at death's doorstep so we're not gonna live very long we're unmarried yeah in fact we have never been married so, how did we get these ten sons? Well, we are an adulterer and a fornicator, right? So, that's how. In my all on the loose, I thought I'd end up doing that for traits, but through a landslide of things lining up, I managed to finish it in just two characters. I was very pleased. Yeah, all on the loose can go very quickly if the situations are just right, I suppose. I haven't done that achievement. So, for those who are new, um, that's what Jesus asked me. <laughs> yes. Well, that's a whole other story. Um, I, I did achievement. I enabled achievements very early in the game. I got the game on day one because uh, I've been playing CK2 for a long, well, not for a very long time, but for quite a while. I was really into that. I discovered it late because I was put off by the name Crusader Kings, because I don't really care that much for the Crusader part. I, I often choose like other cultures. But yes, with the DLC in uh, CK2, you got and to play pagans and Hindu people and all that. So that, that makes it very much more interesting, I think. So yeah, I ignored it for too long, not really knowing what it was about. But once I got into it, I really got into it. And then of course CK3 got announced, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get this. And just look at it, it looks gorgeous. It's so much better in my opinion. I know not everybody agrees, but yes, I'm loving the changes in this game. Most of them, at least. So yeah, as I said, I did um, the very first achievement. I got married, so I got one achievement early on. But then achievements were bugged, and I didn't get them. And then mods started to appear, so I was like, well, okay, forget about achievements. Who cares? I'm going to play with mods. 
and I've done that for several months and then recently I decided like hmm this could make for some interesting videos so let's try and play for achievements Crusader Kings is kind of a bad name for the series considering Crusading isn't even near the main element of the game. Indeed, maybe originally that was the plan, but I don't even know what the original Crusader Kings, the first one, is like. But yeah, it's like... But what kind of name could you give it? It's like a medieval dynasty simulator, where you do a lot of politics and... Waging war, sure, but yeah, there are so many facets to the game, like the whole intrigue part. I enjoy that. Um, yeah, but you could go many different ways, many different lifestyles. But yeah, if it's just, if the main focus would just be on doing crusades, then I wouldn't enjoy it that much anyway <coughs> sorry um, but I am really enjoying this game it's one of my top three favorite games of all time right now so yeah and somebody um, on Twitter just asked me well, asked in general, like, what's your favorite game uh, to play offline? And playing offline is what I do most, in fact. Um, so I said, well, it's Skyrim, which which it is. I've been playing that for many years. But CK3 is definitely vying for that title now. It's just the replay value is enormous, right? It is deep. There's always new things to learn. I've, I'm closing in on 500 hours in CK3 and I'm still discovering new things and new tactics and all that. And that's before we even get DLCs. Anyway, I need to get on with the game, right? Shall we get him a spouse? We don't know how long it's, it's gonna take for him to die. But in order to get at least some of our children a decent marriage, we might need some more diplomacy. Because right now, for example, here... All these people hate my guts. Um, oh, she will barely accept, right? And this is just, yeah, a girl from Ireland. Ooh. That's not bad, actually. That's not bad, actually. Um, but yes, her father has... Oh, her father is unlanded? Oh. Where did we get... It's her brother. Yeah. Her brother, who is the Duke... Oh, uh, not the Duke. The Chieftain, the Count of Ormond in Ireland. Okay, 300 soldiers. Oh, we currently have three, although I'm sure that will get up there once we unpause. Dynasty Kings. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I think the dynasties are the main focus, yes. That is, indeed, you're building uh, your dynasty. It's very character focused, which is what I love about this game and why I find it's really difficult for me to get into Stellaris, for example, which I would love because it's science fiction themed, which is my favorite like uh, genre of books. But yeah, it's, it's so impersonal. But yeah, Dynasty Kings, I don't know. 
This is something for the marketing department and that's not my strength. But yes, yeah, CKA is always good when I'm detailing from League of Legends. Detilting ah, from League of Legends. I think I'm 80 hours on Steam, but I tried to the next book. Game Pass for a month and I played a lot, so probably I counted for it. Yeah, that's a good amount of hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I am going for her. 21 learning is great. Then we can get some, uh, well, assuming we can get the majority of Dutch counties in his lifetime, then we would want uh, extra learning to do a more cultural developments. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking we go for her. On the other hand, having a a woman who is good in uh, no we need this guy in 17 good in stewardship would also help but yeah then we need to go for someone like this or maybe like this mm. Machtelt is Dutch, even. Mm. But yeah, this is this is a decent spread of um, skills. Slavka. Brave, diligent, cynical. She got an intrigue education, but that's her lowest stat. Intriguing. But I think this is actually pretty good. Problem, of course, is with marrying a lowborn is that uh, our heir will lose prestige. Decisions, decisions. I would ideally want someone with higher stewardship. But this isn't very much higher. But yeah, her diplomacy is a little better. Now I'm gonna go for this. Okay. Good. First marriage arranged. Um, we probably should look at who is doing what job and then arrange the other marriages. So he is the best we have in stewardship. Yeah, these are probably all the best we have, right? Okay, that's good. Then let's get back to our um, list here. Gerald is lustful and fecund. He's going to have a lot of children. Luckily he's a genius, so hopefully he will be spreading that. So let's find a spouse with inheritable traits, something that strengthens the intellectual side of the family. Okay, we have a few, but they're all quick. Right. So four 
girls are quick, that are willing to marry him. Um, all of them are low born. This girl has good stats, generally. Mm -hmm. None of them have four stars, right? Oh, she has four stars, but she's a lesbian. Of course, it doesn't mean they can't make babies, but she won't enjoy it. I'm, th I'm thinking we're going for Tether, who is Cornish. She is whole of body, that's also good. Unfortunately, that's not inheritable. And we should probably look to set up some more um, alliances as well. But we should wait for that until Jacob will inherit. Bava doesn't have any traits, so he could be the one to bring in an alliance. Uh, Held we already hooked up with someone. Let's get our Chancellor a chance. Hmm. It is a bit uh, older, but she keeps pretty in the family, so let's do that. Okay, I think that's enough for now. We are not endorsed, no. Yeah, we have a few knights. Well, that's another thing. Um, do we have any unmarried women uh, in my court? Actually, we want... Well, not from my dynasty. Um, yeah, not ruler, adult, women who are unmarried. These three, okay. Can you get somebody? Um, no, just adult. Fertile and by prowess. There is this guy who is already in my court. Wolfhelm, who is only a 10. 
and he is a lunatic. That's not so good. And the hard win is just a seven. I think we may need to wait. Um, because uh, people generally don't like us. So let's wait until my son inherits and then set that up. Um, so we have a court physician. And we're getting some knights. We have three levies. That is pathetic, but I'm sure that will become higher once we start. Let's start the game. To the Serene Alwyn, I gladly accept your marriage proposal. I we'll graciously take the Henry Son Geralt in holy matrimony. Excellent. And cancer, it's time for treatment. The time has come to treat your cancer. Leave me be. It's time for me to die. Uh, some more marriages. And we have an alliance with Ormond. So, yes. And we have died. Okay, that was quick, within a month. Count, oh, sorry. <coughs> Count Alwyn of Zeland rests in the arms of the Lord at 60 years of age. He died of unknown causes. A shameless adulterer, he will be remembered for his treachery and his covetous disposition. Count Jakob ascends to the throne, courageous and willing to rush to action. Many hope that Jakob's bravery will not see the realm fall into reckless ruin. Well, yes, let's try that. So we continue as the count. We also got a new bishop? No, we got a new ruler. But the bishop endorses us now. So that is good. Right? He likes us because uh, we are open-minded, okay, and brave. Yeah, he doesn't hold our uh, culture against us, just a short reign, but that's all good. It's all good. But now we don't have a steward anymore because our steward became the count. Yes. So you, my dear, you're going to assist... I guess with managing domain for now. Yeah, it's not much, but every little bit helps to get more money. Um, and here, our next best option is Robert. I guess, yeah. And we need to choose a lifestyle. Hmm. We are already a scholar. Oh, we've got 23 now. Okay, with everything together. That's great. Okay, so if we go to learning... You see, this all is filled out, so we have all these, and it's just very good. Maybe we want to go for Hall of Body. Um, but we might first want to go for something else. Right, we have pedagogy. I think we might want to get groomed to rule, befriend these things. We could go for diplomacy and prestige. It is one of our weaker skills. Marshall, we can also do this. Control growth. Right. That is pretty good. Um, or this, the cutting cornerstones. 
tax man. Because early on, there is always the problem of money. So I think we shall go with this first. These are also very good. And we do want babies. Right, how much money are we making right now? 1.8. To get men at arms, we need to pay money because we're feudal. So, and we want to expand, we want to take over the duchy first. Mm. This is our liege who doesn't like us. And he is much stronger, although we have allies. We should be looking at getting more allies, stronger allies, now that our father died. Bless his memory. Oh, uh, yeah. Choices, choices. Um. I think stewardship first. Stewardship first. Got your guest opinion. Yeah, no, we go for wealth. We need to get a war chest ready. So that's what we're doing. Then, how are our knights? Average, basically. Yeah, once we have some money, we need to get some better knights. Although we did have some unmarried women here. Would we now get better knights? Mathieu. 20. Yes, we do. Wilhelmina. Yes, we need your services. Sans. Ooh, he is really good. Yeah. And we had one more, Margareta. Marga, what can you do for us? Charles is slow though, that's not good. His marshal is very low. Yeah, how about this one, Gonzalo? That looks good. And Fothard looks even better. They're both eating, yeah. No, both out is better. Okay. There we go. There we go. Yeah. 
Who is uh, unmarried amongst our brothers? Um, let's set this to defaults, go back to court. Our dynasty unmarried. Uh, Bavo. And we have some younger ones here. Big Bavo. Can you bring in an alliance? The best you can do is the county of Klingenberg and the county of Anjou. Klingenberg is, well, 700. Okay, how far away are Klingenberg? The Salian is, it's a historical house, right? How far? How far away is Klingenberg? Hello? Over there. Oh, that's not bad. It's not too far away. And Anjou is like here, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, okay, we're just a count ourselves. We can't expect a duke to get allied with us straight away. Um, I think I'll take that. Um, Bavo. Sword by yeah, Alliance Power. Klingenberg. I mean, she's not amazing, but decent learning. And we had another unmarried guy without any amazing traits. Martin, can you bring in another alliance? Like, yes, House Robertin. Or this, Ravensburg. Ah, oh, that's even farther away into Germany. Ravensburg and the other one was yeah she has a claim on the Duchy of Anjou who knows what's going to happen with this family would not be bad to be potentially involved in that. Hmm, we have you did wealth. Who is also who also will give us Anjou, but she's of a different family. She has a claim on Zurich. You, you, you are not getting the same selection of ladies. Because that you did wealth is not there. She was like 17, right? Uh, alliance. Okay, that's better. No, she's no longer on the list for some reason. Maybe she just doesn't like him. Isabel. Isabel uh, is decent and pretty. Okay, it's just a barony. It's not going to help us really.
but should keep the, the trait in the family, hopefully. Alright, let's do that. Yeah, we have more families, who, family members who need to get married. Alliance form with the Baron. Uh, okay. And uh, they will get married. We get an alliance with the Count of Anjou. As an influential count, it is only fair that you have a voice in my council. In recognition of this fact, I hereby offer you the position of Spy Master of Holland. Spy Master, that's like one of our lowest skills, but yeah, Steward would be nice. That would also give us better um, income, right? All his people are terrible, but yeah, he, he thinks we're better at spying than anybody else that he's got. He should have, I mean, his steward has zero in stewardship. Yeah, you should have appointed him to be the diplomat, the chancellor. And him to be the spy master and me to be the steward. But I guess our liege isn't the smartest of the bunch. He's a good diplomat though. Alright. Maybe later he'll change his mind. Let's hope for that. Okay, anything else we need to set up? We need to keep a look out for possible like alliances. Like when these guys are gonna have kids, Wessex is a pretty good one to be allied to. Although we do have an eye more or less on Canterbury because uh, that brings in an extra three gold of tax a month if we can lay um, hands on that. But that's for the future. Another thing that we're looking uh, for is Cologne. Cologne has um, a special building, the, uh, the cathedral, which also grants a lot of tax money. And I think we should ask our bishop to fabricate a claim. Yeah, he's just 14, okay, on Holland. Because that's what we're going for next. But yes, we have good knights. We don't have a lot of levies. That's a problem. And we don't have a lot of money to get men at arms. We will need to get some or we should invest in mercenaries. Yeah, then we'll need at least 125 gold every three years or more if we want a better group like these pikemen. Uh, pikemen are good in mountains. Holland doesn't have mountains. There's a faction against him. Your acquaintance, Count Radbart, created the Liberty faction. Ooh. He's too weak to send an ultimatum. Yeah, we want his land, though. Folk welding. He only has 167 troops yeah there is no chance against the 600 and rising he is like footman yeah skirmishes 
a snake at court. I am heading for my chambers to enjoy some blessed sleep when I hear a faint rustle from a window. Just the wind, I think, until the wind starts to speak. Berta, open up, my darling. It is I, Giselbert. I push the shutters open, and lo and behold, a man has climbed up to Berta's window. It is Count Giselbert of Brabant. And Giselbert is my sister-in-law. Okay. And he is a chicken. That's yeah. But she's a chicken too. She wouldn't. She wouldn't cheat on him. By the Satan, have you no shame, guards? And he will dislike me now. Yeah, he is a lustful seducer. Hmm. And he's married with. Uh, oh, he's a. She's a carling. Oh. But no alliance. Okay. Uh, wait a moment. Kjellnos died of old age. Oh, that's too bad. We have a new bishop, Roland, who is much worse at learning and much worse at doing his job of getting us a claim. Well, the claim is almost done, anyway. And we have barely enough money for it. Yes, all that is missing is a little bribe. See, it done. Oh, 93. We don't have enough money. Why? I thought it was 50, the standard. Well, we're going to pay for it anyway. Um, we're not going to use it immediately. We need to build up our war chest again. Pregnancy. Fate smiles upon me. My wife, Countess Sila, is bearing my child. I cannot wait to hold the baby in my arms. Uh, Holland now has... 167. They're inferior. They have five knights, but we have better knights. Right? We don't have more soldiers, but we have allies. Um... Maybe I should just go for it before it becomes more complicated. Although, I can't call in my allies with less than 150 prestige, can I? So let's build that up. Yeah, I have top much knights now. Well, that is not half bad. It's 12 prowess. Hmm. 